thanks for coming along tonight. Um, and but biggest thanks of all go to Laura because she had a bike accident the other day and she still oh. managed to come on her crutches. Oh my goodness. I know, sorry. Is there a story in the bike accident? Well, only just, uh, just I was knocked off literally by a car. And um, so watch out, everybody in this room who cycles, because it's a completely random thing. There's nothing you can do about it. Did and it bloody it well happens. No, um, no. No. And he drove off. Oh. 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 So I do feel about 103, which is my daughter said I thought I looked like afterwards, which was really helpful. It's what you really need, isn't it? <laughs> Um, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to be in conversation. So often what we <coughs> present is, um, is a night of talking about what agents are looking for and what this agent in particular is looking for. We will cover that. But um, early, what, what sparked the slightly different format is Laura saying, actually, you know, I'm going to do something different tonight. But also, um, Kirsty and I were having a chat earlier about what's selling at the moment um, and what, what, what's not selling, and I think that's really fascinating, so we'll um, cover some of that, okay? So, Laura, can you just tell us a little bit about your agency, because it's, it's mm. run differently to... Um... Yes, I mean, I suppose the, diff the difference in MBA, and actually, it, is, it isn't unique, but it is quite um, special in that we have a film and TV arm. So um, we have agents who do nothing but film and TV, radio, theatre, you know, sort of that whole side of uh, being an agent. And then there are us um, others who are specialist literary agents. Um, but the great thing is, is that you go to them and you say, I've got a, you know, psychological thriller and it's set in New York and, you know, would you have a read? And, and when you're next talking to producers, because that's seems to me to be how the film and TV work is they, they just have so many meetings and they sit around and they just say so what about this idea what about this author what about this you know and so if you and, and they'll read they'll read books of course so much film and TV comes from books and so we're in a really good position to um, exploit that but we've also got um, an, uh, lots of scriptwriter clients who um, obviously specialize in writing scripts for um, you know the serials on TV and films and all sorts. Um, but if we could say to them, you know, does, do you fancy reading this book? And if you have a scriptwriter, I mean, not every production company wants a scriptwriter already attached. They like to bring their own in. Mm -hmm. But you know, sometimes if the name's big enough or that it gives them an idea of what the project is, it can be it can be absolutely brilliant. And, and even better if they then write it, because then we get commission on both. Yeah, <laughs> tasty. I like yeah. the sound of that. Yeah. So what is what is selling? Because um, I mean I'm sort of boring myself <coughs> lately because I'm talking about concept and story and any kind of um, eye bites that you can present um, mm. in terms of a, well, amazingly enough, a, psychological thriller still is. Still. I mean, I, you would have thought the formula was so tired and done. Uh, and in the way of these bandwagons, you know, it gets sort of more and more kind of samey or, you know, uh, yet another endangered child or, or, or unreliable wife with drink problem or, or whatever it is. But there seems to be, you know, this, um, so that seems to be still very much what uh, the Americans want, certainly. Um, here... Um, the, um, the new formula is called speculative fiction. Have people heard of this? Um, I don't know if that's... It's, it's basically, it's psychological thriller with zombies. Or, oh, yeah. oh, that's so specific. Or, well, not necessarily, but sort of a fantasy element. Right. So, so it's room. kind of taking okay. the thing onto a different sort of. Um, mm. Is that right? Would you, would you say that's right, Kirsty? Yeah. 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 Where does the word speculative come in? It's quite a good word, isn't it? Because if you say thriller, fantasy thriller, people think, mm, yeah. you know, no, I don't do science fiction. And, you know, most of us would say that a mm. lot, uh, certainly. I have colleagues who do science fiction, but I don't, I don't try to do it. And um, so speculative, I suppose you you can um, you know it can it can cover all sorts of things. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So that's sort of something um, that people are, are, are talking about a bit at the moment. But what is selling is girl on a tra on the train. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Still, yeah. Yeah. 
So if you and tried to sell um, something with girl in the title tomorrow, um, I, love, I love the way they roll their eyes. I mean, I remember this, you know, from a commissioning meeting. Everyone would roll their eyes, oh, not another one of those. And then 10 minutes later, we'd be acquiring it. This is kind of a whinging about yeah. the sameness of it, but actually the a pressure of, well, if it's still working, we need to still be doing I know, it. I know, I know. I think that's right, and I think publishers are still... Um, yeah, they, 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 they say, um, oh, we've got, you know, we've got our quota, we've got enough. Um, but, you know, if another one comes along and they can see that it's got, you know, film potential and American mm. potential well, and it's not too expensive. I had, I had one I called, ironically, I have to say, Girl in a Caravan, <laughs> 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 which was a girl, uh, which was a young woman who, um, I sold it to Book Couture, I don't know if that's a publisher any of you have heard of or done any business with. It actually just won everything at the Romantic Novelists Association last week, cleaned up because it is a very, very brilliant ebook only publisher, which mm. I know for some people is, you know, really not, you know, they want their mum to be able to go into Smith's and, yeah, they have my daughter's book. But Book Couture have sort of got, um, you know, a brilliant formula. They're, they're, they're from a background of ebook and um, Mills and Boone, and so very commercial, very targeted, very kind of category oriented type of publishing. If any of these words don't mean anything or you want to please say because it's I, I, I don't want to come across as you know saying all sorts of jargon that doesn't make any sense so please just interrupt. Um, so uh, yes yeah, so they um, they do book, ebook only they're very careful they've got thriller, saga, romantic and they're starting to do a bit of non-fiction and um, they have its prices, its promotions, its covers, its it, whatever the formula, it's working. Mm. Anyway, I sold this. Well, in fact, I didn't sell because they don't have advances, <laughs> but they have very good royalties forty percent royalty. Wow, yeah, mm. which is pretty good. And um, and this one I call Girl on a Train, and there's a young woman who's in a caravan park, and she's being battered. There are people kind of shouting at her and shoving her caravan about, and she's really scared and she's really drunk and she's absolutely all over the place and what has happened is her husband and a young teenager from the local school have both disappeared on the same day about four months before so obviously you know everybody the press the locals everybody's jumped, jumped to conclusions um and she's you know pretty sure herself but becoming less and sure, less sure over time so it's her mm. yeah, her journey <clears throat> it does sound good yeah we haven't got another a final title for it <laughs> but I don't think it's going to be in the caravan. <laughs> yeah. I suppose the thing about those stories is that, you know, in the in the times when time is short and we're distracted, they um, you can you can keep your concentration with those because you know what the central mm. plot is. You remember it really quickly. There aren't millions of characters to remember. So yes, and I think that that is an advantage in just being inside one person's head, even if it's you know, drunk or slightly all over the place or dementia or whatever, is, um, but... I, soothing. It, well, I don't know about soothing, <laughs> but it's sort of constant, it does, it sort of, yeah. you know, it lets you do the work, doesn't it? Yeah. But sometimes I think it, it is quite nice to have two voices, I think, um, to have, um, you know, even if, if, even if it's sometimes a voice you don't know quite who it is or whatever. Mm. Um, but I, I don't know what people think, but I, I, I quite like to... Uh, escape, uh, particularly if it's in, inside, inside the head of someone who's very uncomfortable and mm. unhappy. Mm. It's quite nice mm. to see the world and also to see them from a different point of view. You know, whether it's their child or their husband or their, mm. you know, you just uh, you just need to. So suddenly, first points. person is a lot less unfashionable than it was because of this mm. these psychological thrillers. But as well. people see it, but definitely, but people seem to do points of views, but not necessarily first person quite a lot. I don't know whether people feel about that, but I, I, I struggle with more than about three or four, I think, in a book. I think I prefer two, maybe two and a half, but um, <laughs> I think anything beyond that, I'm, you know, I'm feeling, unless they're very different and mm. very delineated, but sometimes you, you, it's quite similar. hard. Mm. Mm. So, and have you yeah, sold just, anything that's quiet lately that's not so popular, that's quite... I, I sold a novel um, which was in the you person entirely. Um, the conceit is that uh, someone who's on the Lancastria, 
which is one of those terrible um, scandals in from the no is it let's show how my befuddled my brain is. I think it was the Second World War, beginning of the Second World War. It was um, bringing people back from. It was one of the Dunkirk ships, but it was a huge, a huge, huge, huge one, um, and it was full of troops and families and refugees, and it was sunk by a single German um, aeroplane bomb. And it was covered up because um, they didn't want to, um, you know, morale was low enough as it was in 1940. So, so, and it's never really been, um, you know, it's never really had the recognition it should have. Anyway, this poor chap is on the Lancastria and he is trying to get home to his sweetheart. And so he's sort of writing his final letter and remembering their love. And it's so it's 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 you you this the whole way through, mm -hmm. and you kind of then don't you don't know whether he survives or whether he gets home and things like that, and that's quiet in that it's set mostly in the Welsh valleys and it's in a house with a big garden and it's it's gentle so yes, and I've sold a book um, sold it uh, set in North Northumbria uh, just after the First World War which is an author who's always described as quiet Suji. Um, but she, because she's a, somebody who describes nature, people's feelings, it's very internal, um, it's very, very beautiful, um, beautifully written. She's won all sorts of prizes and people admire her hugely. She's been um, a Daily Mail book club, she's won the Good Housekeeping Award, you know, she, she's run the RNA. She's not somebody who's not known, mm. but if you showed it to an American publisher, they'd say, oh, it's so quiet, it's so English, and, mm. and that's the end of that. But um, so no, I, 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 I can go with quiet, but 